So one of the community projects that I'm involved with that uh, is um, building local resources is called Desert Harvesters. And a number of folks have come together with the idea of making uh, local food plants more uh, appealing and available to the public. So the mesquite tree, it's a native legume that produces a naturally sweet edible seed pod. This used to be a major staple of the indigenous peoples of uh, the Tucson area, um, but uh, has faded out as more processed foods have come into our lives. And uh, I took a, a workshop with Max Lindiger, who designs uh, uh, sustainable villages and whatnot. And he told this story of how a walk he took with his grandfather in the, in the foothills of the Swiss Alps by the village where his grandfather had grown up. And his grandfather pointed up to the foothills and he said, do you see all those condominiums being built in the foothills? And Max said, yeah. And he said, well, that is where we gleaned our food in the war. When we had nothing, that's where we could find something. Where will we go in the next calamity? And Max then challenged all of us. He said, I want you to go and look in your communities where do you have the, the resilience basket? You know, where, where do you have those sections, the commons, where you can tap, your, you're not currently tapping those resources, but you can in times of need. And uh, I looked around my desert community and saw, well, I don't have the Swiss Alps, um, and uh, I'm in the middle of the city in downtown, so where do I go? Where are the commons? And then I realized, well, right here, right alongside the street in the public right-of-way, that area between the curb and the property line, this is where we could grow street trees that could shade and cool the street, beautifying the neighborhood, but we could select trees that also produced food. And what better than a native tree that produces food, such as the mesquite, already perfectly adapted to the local rainfall patterns and soils. In uh, coastal California, it would probably be the oak tree. Um, in other areas, it might be a palm, a fruiting palm tree. In uh, New Mexico, it could be the pinyon pine uh, with the pinyon nuts. So see what's appropriate in your area. We jumped onto the mesquite and the peanut flavored desert ironwood tree and the barley uh, seeded Palo Verde trees. Uh, so these are what we started. We started creating neighborhood tree planting projects. Where we planted these along the streets, but we planted them within water harvesting earthworks. So the rain would irrigate them. And then we cut the street curb to allow street runoff in to also irrigate the street trees. So the streets that shade the street are irrigated by the street. And they're gardened and cared for by the people living along those streets. So it's this wonderful, sustainable loop where everything's feeding into everything else. Um, and uh, it's been working really well. And to entice more people, we have these mesquite pancake breakfasts where people can come out and taste how good the mesquite is. And we have prickly pear syrup. And then we have a hammer mill on a trailer that we can take around to the different neighborhoods and events where people can grind up the mesquite pod into a naturally sweet edible flower. Because it's kind of tough to grind unless you use this hammer mill. Then it's really easy. So more and more people are getting excited and then they want to do it. So we give them information on, well, here's how you plant the tree. Here's how you plant the rain before you plant the tree. And here's how you organize your neighbors to come together. And so you live in a neighborhood of friends, not strangers. Maybe that's really where you'd like to be. That's where I want to be. So um, it all feeds into it. And it's even better if you can hang out with friends with good food picked right from the tree under which you're sitting. Oh, and if folks would like to get more information on this whole program, they can go to desertharvesters.org. A great water harvesting strategy is the harvest of household gray water. Gray water is the water coming from a house bathroom sink, bathtub, shower, or washing machine. It is not the water from the kitchen sink, the dishwasher, or the toilet. Th those sources are considered black water because there's more organic matter in it, which is potential food for bacteria. Um, however, if done properly, uh, I think kitchen sink water can be harvested and classified as dark gray water. Okay, uh, And it's interesting that 
uh, prior to 2002, 2003, harvesting gray water was illegal in the state of Arizona. But uh, it has since become legal. And the reason for this is because thousands of people harvested their gray water when it was illegal. <laughs> and uh, some researchers wanted to see, was there any significant health risk with these people harvesting gray water and the systems they had? And uh, after doing research, they found as long as people were using common sense and they didn't just let their gray water pool on the surface as a festering cesspool, but instead would direct that gray water to mulched water harvesting basins, your rain gardens or gray water gardens with a lot of vegetation to utilize the water, there was no significant health risk. And of course they needed to be careful on what soaps they use and not send toxins down the drain. So uh, when the researchers found that as long as people follow common sense, there was no significant health risk, they took these findings to the authorities. And they said, look, we could promote gray water harvesting, get a huge amount of water conservation, um, and we could use these common sense principles or best management practices as the guideline. So now that is the law in Arizona. There's no permit, inspection, or fee for anyone harvesting their gray water as long as they follow the best management practices. So it's a great um, incentive model where the goal is set forth and the principles to achieve it, but not a set recipe. It's not like a code book in that sense. So there's room for innovation. And now that it's legal, Arizona's gone even further. Uh, Arizona will pay you to harvest your rainwater and, and to harvest your, your gray water, uh, up to $1,200 per household that does it. Uh, and it's going even further. Now certain communities such as Cottonwood, Arizona, Sierra Vista, and perhaps soon Tucson mandate the installation of gray water stub outs at the time of home construction. And a stub out is just a little section of pipe next to the drain pipe, perhaps coming from a sink. So after you move in, if you want to hook up to it, you just put a little three-way valve that allows the water to go from the sink to the landscape if you turn the valve sending it there. Um, so I encourage communities, people in communities where gray water harvesting may not be currently legal or local regulations might be restrictive, show your local authorities the Arizona model and they can get the, they can find the study, um, the Arizona laws and all the financial incentives on the gray water harvesting page of my website harvestingrainwater.com.